कश्मीर लाइफ ड्रीम बिग सीजन थ्री के इस शुमारे में आप सब नाजरीन का इस्तेबाल है आज के इस एपिसोड में हमारे साथ शामिल है दानिश जहूर ये एक वर्किंग प्रोफेशनल है He has seven years of experience in content writing and four years of experience in teaching at higher secondary level. He has done his BBA uh, from Kashmir University and MBA from Symbiosis International University, Pune, Maharashtra. Additionally, he has also pursued his masters in political science and has also done his BS BA program as well. So recently, he has been awarded uh, with full-time uh, international business scholarship at Leeds University, England, for his PhD. So today, we will be interacting with Danish, and we will be interacting with Danish, and we will be interacting with Danish, and we will be interacting with Danish. So first of all, Danish, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for yeah. inviting me. It's really important. So uh, starting uh, the session, Danish, what is your experience with Danish? 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 आप अपनी एजुकेशनल क्वालिफिकेशंस के बारे में बताएं और अपने करियर के बारे में थोड़ी डिटेल्स सो आई कम फ्रॉम द सोरा एरिया ऑफ श्रीनगर आई वाज बोर्न एंड रेज्ड हियर मोर प्रिसाइसली अलोंग द अलीजान रोड एंड आई डिड माय स्कूलिंग फ्रॉम बर्न हॉल आफ्टर दैट आई डिड माय बीबीए फ्रॉम द कश्मीर यूनिवर्सिटी इट वाज एक्चुअली अ 5 ईयर एमबीए प्रोग्राम एंड बैक इन दोस डेज वी हैड एन ऑप्शन ऑफ एग्जिटिंग द प्रोग्राम आफ्टर 3 इयर्स एंड इन दैट केस वी वर अवार्डेड द बीबीए डिग्री दैट्स एग्जैक्टली द ऑप्शन दैट आई चोज and uh, then i went on to do my mba at the prestigious symbiosis international university pune after qualifying a national level uh, entrance exam that they hold the snap symbiosis national aptitude test after my mba i was campus recruited by a uh, a multinational firm called ernst and young uh, in bombay i worked there for a little while as a business consultant uh, but it was then that i realized that uh, i was not cut out for a co- corporate job um i i had a realization that my real calling was really research and academics um, basically the more boring stuff so i quit the job returned back home joined the school education department here uh, and that's where i've been working uh, ever since but I, I, along the way i also earned this this extra masters degree in political science um, and that's what i've been teaching at the higher, higher secondary level here uh at the at the school education department i have also been uh, on and off associated with the diet shrinagar where i work as uh, where i worked as a teacher trainer um most of my trainings uh, revolve around um, bringing the teachers to par with latest technological advancements and policy um, developments in the field of in the field of education so that's the entire gist of my um, academic and professional uh, career so far currently what are you up to and where are you like presently is pakka kahan hai i'm working uh, in kashmir uh, in the school education department itself i'll be starting my program uh, in october and uh, that's when I'll, i'll i'll have to move out and let's see i I'm, a lot of these things are not decided as yet in terms of whether i'll just be going for the data collection or a full time research um, uh, that that that's a call that the university will have to take but anyway at this stage i'm i'm still working at the education department um, till till october So, uh, coming to your bachelor's, your BBA program that you did from University of Kashmir. So, could you tell us about your experiences at the university and what were the major takeaways from this program? So, the BBA at the university level was actually a very rewarding experience for me personally. The curriculum was very well structured; it was very comprehensive. And for years after completing my BBA, it, uh, you know, it seemed very useful to me at various levels, uh, working in the industry. um but i think if there's if there's one thing that uh, the program really missed out on was it was the industry exposure remember mba and bba are, they are very practical uh, degrees they are very industry oriented uh, solution oriented degrees and um you know just classroom learning is not enough for these degrees and i think that was a, that, that was something that uh, the university bba uh, lacked Uh, also the human skills that these degrees require networking skills communication skills i think there was there was quite a bit uh, lacking on that front as well but anyway this has it has been like 10 years since i graduated from the university i'm not really sure i haven't gone back there i haven't re- I'm, i'm not really sure what uh, changes they have brought in their syllabus or in their teaching methodologies ever since i hope they have uh, been able to plug these loopholes um but yeah that that's uh, on on academic front it was it was an experience worthwhile and uh, i'll always cherish those years uh, for the rest of my life so uh, danish you did your mba from 
Symbiosis International University that is in Pune. So uh, kindly tell us that how did your master's in business administration contribute to your understanding of you know, business management and economics? All right, so an MBA is a relatively new degree um, uh, in, the, in the sense that it has, it emerged, it came into vogue only after the Second World War when, the, when we saw an, a massive industrial boom in the West, especially in the US. Um, and MBA was a degree that was um, targeted at this new emerging uh, managerial class that was working in the industry, uh, a step above um, the menial laborers, the, the workers on the factory floor. And it was a degree meant to, um, you know, equip these managers to be able to perform within constraints to improve efficiency of business operations. And this was the initial rise of the MBA degree. And um, and and over the years, since that period of time, the global economy has evolved. And I'm glad to say that MBA degrees in colleges and universities across the world, they have also followed close on heels. They've also evolved. Um, the syllabus, the curriculum that is being taught in these um, institutes across the world, uh, that has that has followed the trends in the industry today we have an economy driven with uh, driven by technology driven by um, you know uh, ICT in uh, information and communication technology and MBA degrees across the world are focusing on ICT big time so I think uh, MBA is is not a degree which uh, which is supposed to be engraved in stone so to say like more established degrees like um, you know science mathematics MBA is a degree that is very like I already said, uh, practice oriented. It is solution oriented. It has. Uh, it is something that you need to go out, apply out there in the industry. Um, you know your learnings in the classroom have to be perfectly in tune with the demands of the industry. So I think this is something that uh, that I really gained from my uh, from my years during my MBA. I think I also gained on 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 a lot of um, human skills. I uh, in terms of like networking, communications, public speaking is something uh, which is very critical for for every MBA graduate. It is like bread and butter. You are expected to stand up in front of a crowd and deliver presentations every now and then. So I think those uh, those skills I, I I have taken back those skills from my MBA years, and I, I think that have, they have they have uh, definitely contributed to my understanding of not just the academic portion of uh, MBA, like you said, business and economics, but also uh, a practical solution oriented, um, you know, developed a practical or and solution oriented dimension in my personality. So, uh, see, you also did your additional masters, but you also had degree. So you did your additional masters in political science. So what right. motivated you to, you know, pursue this additional masters? And do you think that it has influenced, you know, your teaching or research interests? Pure passion, I, I would say. Pure passion. I, uh, you know, back when I was graduating back in the day, uh, it's been 10 years, I feel very old. Uh, but back when I was graduating, uh, social science degrees like political science um, was not a very employable degree in the sense that uh, you did not expect to get employed as soon as you you know, did your master's in political science. Um, you, you do not really, un unless, of course, you went into academia and, you know, joined some generalized uh, teaching uh, uh, job, which I thought is always was always injustice to the program that you're pursuing, uh, whether it is your uh, master's in political science, history, sociology. These social science degrees luckily have in the recent past found a lot of um, employability. Social science professionals have found a lot of employability in the sense that there is a mushroom growth of uh, public policy think tanks across the world in India itself. There's a mushroom growth of consultants uh, that are hiring these political science graduates or social science graduates in huge numbers. So these are the best. This is the best time if you if you are uh, you're passionate about social science or political science. This is the best time for you to jump in into this field. And uh, you know you have. Uh, very, very decent chances of getting employed in a good uh, public policy think tank or a consulting firm. But for me, it was uh, not employability. I, I already had an MBA degree, but for me, it was pure passion. Like I said, it is a degree that I think broadens your horizons. It's a degree that um, brings in learnings from different fields. Multidisciplinary uh, approach is followed. Um, economics, psychology, history, philosophy, all of these fields uh, you know, somewhat flow into political science and, you know, go, contribute to to broadening your horizons, so to say. Uh, but at any rate, it was pure passion and it has definitely uh, helped me in my teaching at the school education department. I've been teaching political science for the last four years now. Um, 
it has um, it has contributed uh, in a big way to that but in general also it is i think it is something that uh, young people should look at as a great opportunity um, to join the industry tomorrow to join the like i said public policy think tanks and why not even you know even mainstream politics so yeah it 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 has been a good addition to my resume we know that you got into teaching which is obviously a noble profession so you also did your ba program for that so do you think mm. that uh, your ba program has you know influenced your teaching methodology and approach and you know you know there are there any skills that you developed during this program and do you like literally apply them in your current teaching role so much like uh, mba ba is also a a practical or practice oriented degree it's a professional degree mm -hmm. and uh, um, i would not speak for everybody i would speak for myself uh, what i actually drew out of my ba but mm -hmm. it it is it was a program that was mandated by the department as as a teaching professional you are required to um, do your ba in the school education department and i uh, what i gained out of it was uh, an understanding of international best practices in terms of technological advancements in teaching uh in terms of the latest research let's say for is, for instance um student psychology is an area that is being constantly researched that is an that is uh you know extremely dynamic uh field of study and that i believe is also very important for teachers to be in tune with that is something that i really drew out of my ba degree and definitely it has actually flown i i, I take all of those learnings with me to the classroom i i have a better understanding of teaching methodologies i have a better understanding of teaching aids i have a better understanding of global best practices policies education policies across the world uh, and yeah student psychology to a great extent as well because at the end of the day when you are in a classroom you are not interacting with uh, you know you are interacting with real human beings you are interacting with real minds and uh, it is not as easy as it seems it's a it's a you know uh rather it, it's a rather complicated uh, dynamic that a teacher has with students especially even if you're teaching um, young adults like i do uh, so so yeah you have to be careful about a lot of things you have to be careful about uh, not just motivating the students driving them to um, do better but also take care of a lot of insecurities that students develop at this stage of their of their life these are adolescents very sensitive young people so a lot of these things actually are a part of our ba program and a lot of these learnings uh, do eventually go in with you to the classroom so uh, like how do you find like balancing these you know your passion how do you find you know balancing teaching with your other professional interests like because you have uh, uh, experience of content writer you have experience as being a business consultant as well so how do you you know manage and tackle these things all at once friends and i tell them that i charge money for only the words which i either write or i speak that's the only thing that i charge charge money for uh, but no i think uh, it's all about the inner drive as a professional i wouldn't be it, it might sound a little cliched you know when you are motivated enough you don't work a single day in your life but no i think um, and i also tell my students the same thing that if, if you're passionate about something uh, the drive comes from within uh, all of the other things your career growth your the money uh, the the jobs that you're going to be doing these will keep following you they'll, they'll come close on heels but the most important thing the most primary thing is in my opinion the drive the inner passion towards uh, towards a profession or even a hobby for, for for that matter anything anything that comes the 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 drive must in short come from within and then i think uh, people can actually balance out a lot of things people can actually uh, balance out a lot of professions in a way we have people moonlighting these days i i think that that is the right term people working for multiple companies at the same time but i don't know if it is passion for, uh, you know that drives them or uh, you know need to earn more money but anyway i think uh, if if you are passionate if you have uh, the desire to 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 pursue something uh, the, the 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 doors really do open for you so uh, one of the most important question uh, that i have for you is like that recently you have achieved you know uh, funding to pursue your phd Uh, at uh, Leeds University of you know in UK, so uh, finally tell us about it. How did you you know manage to acquire you know that scholarship? What was the application process and 
you know, how did you manage to literally acquire it? Like it, it takes a lot of, you know, process to go through it. So kindly give us the detail about that. The research is a field that is really coming up, especially in the developed world, especially in the West, where there's a lot of investment in terms of, uh, you know, the government fundings that is going into research. And a lot of our people, a lot of our young students have a lot of potential to pursue research. For me, the process was uh, simply to approach experts in a field that I wanted to study in. Uh, migration studies is what I'm doing my re research in. And uh, and the and the field is, if you, if you look, if you look up, um, you know, issues related to this field, you'll find this is a very current issue. It is there in the media. In, in British press, you'll find a lot of issues regarding, you know, mag migration, regarding agricultural labor that I'm going to be working on more specifically. So it is there in the news. Currently, it is a problem that the UK government is grappling with. So I think for anybody wanting, wanting to do research in public policy or social science, the first thing to note would be whether the topic has current relevance. So that's that's the first and foremost thing, because if a government is willing to spend some amount of money on you, on your research, it must solve some of their problems. It must be a problem of current relevance. The second part is you have to remember that when you're doing your research, when you're doing your PhD, you're not the only stakeholder. There are people who are going to benefit from that um, study as well. There are going to be people, there are going to be experts who are going to work with you and in the process build their own profile as well it's it, it's a win-win situation for both of you 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 and your your supervisor so that's why the next important step is to find the right person the right supervisor who is who you think is going to guide you um well who has the required expertise who has the required experience and who you think would be willing all all their profiles are available on university website there's a reason that full-fledged profiles are mentioned in, in their um you know university web pages uh, it, it's it's because they want to they also want to attract good talent uh, they also want to attract good researchers potential researchers um so that you know eventually they can all they, they have something to show for uh, so that was the second step finding the right supervisor which i did uh, luckily and the third step was approaching it was a more formal process approaching the university with a scholarship proposal with a with a, um, a research proposal i beg your pardon uh, and that uh, that process was definitely aided by my my supervisor and uh, she played a big role there and and once you convince your supervisor that you know this is the, you are going to deliver results i think the rest of the process is much simpler these are these universities do not work like the ones we have in our part of the world there are no exams to qualify the point is you need to make sure that you are able to convince them you are able to convince the immediate supervisor uh, in terms of the results that you're going to deliver and then things are more flexible things flow uh, one thing leads to another and um, you know you, hopefully you you do eventually get the results that you desire so like what specific areas of like uh, business management economics are you like interested in you know pursuing pursuing your phd right between my management studies and my political science studies this is this is a phd that i'm going to be pursuing at the uh, leeds university business school but this is also going to touch a lot of human rights issues of the migrant laborers that come and work in the UK from different parts of the world, especially the developing parts of the world. Most of them come from Central Asia, countries like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. Um, and in the process, while they're working there, they tend to get exploited. Uh, the, the, there's this concept of modern slavery uh, that that is bandied about a lot on the internet these days. So my research will actually aim to find out whether modern slavery is being done with these laborers who are trying to who are, who are who are leaving their homes behind in their in their countries leaving their families behind coming to the uk contributing to uk's economy uh and you know in the process trying to make a living so is is this a form of modern slavery uh when when people are uh, there, there are lots of issues associated with it they cannot for instance change their employer they they have to serve for a limited for, for a certain period of time necessarily their living conditions have raised a lot of question marks so all of these issues are very very directly uh, associated with their human rights these uh, th these are these are going to be the field of my study in this research so uh, coming to the end of the session you know are there any guidances or any thoughts that you would want to put forward for audience out there so i think uh, for a very long time i have observed because i interact with young people a lot young students in the age bracket of 17 to 19 years of age 
I uh, the most common problem that I see is a lot of these people are carrying secondhand dreams um, for their careers, and uh, I I would just say uh, that you know just go and pursue things that you're passionate about truly, and that makes all the sense in the world for me. Uh, if you're if you're pursuing something that people are trying to impose on you, if the society is trying to portray a very glorious picture of a certain profession, don't go by that. <laughs> Only go for a profession, for a career that you're passionate about, that for, for which the drive comes from within, not for for a profession that is being glorified, overhyped. Um, you know, we have a culture, unfortunately, we have a culture of overhyping certain professions uh, in this part of the world. And a lot of young people are falling prey to it. A lot of young people are going through excruciating pain in terms of mental health, in terms of, um, you know, career crisis down the road. And and I have I have observed all of that with, with many of the young students that have been teaching and also been in touch with after they uh, complete their education. So I think my advice would definitely be to follow their passion. And uh, once they do that, I think uh, the success will follow close on heels. We thank you so much for joining us today, Spanish. It was lovely having you today. And uh, for whatever comes, we wish you all the best ahead. Thank you so much. Again. Thank you so much. It was great speaking to you. Thank you so much.